have been the concentration camps for all the bad people. Look, our creating. Who's going to win? David will defeat Goliath. We are here to bring it on. We are children of the sun. And the sun, our, our brother in the heavens, our solar system, Michael, Jesus, our saviour, helps because he will bring us into the place where our consciousness will rise so as we shall remember what to do and do it. And we shall go into the age of the hero and be heroes. We're there now. We are there now because we are heroes because we are, look at it, we're, we're, we're um, endeavouring to... Um, to grow ourselves. Okay, now I'm, at, I'm eight minutes over, so you know I mean, uh, for anyone else who's got questions and wants to uh, hang hang back, and I can go on for another 10 or 20 minutes or as long as you like, but uh, obviously we're going to be start losing. So thank you for joining, one and all. Thank you so much. I'm going to go back and have a look at some of these questions if you want to hang back for um, to answer them because I know I've missed a few. But thanks, everybody. Uh, sorry for all the technical problems. My computer is a mess. You know, I click on an icon and it takes about 20 seconds sometimes for the uh, computer to respond. Now, my laptop's good, but I don't like using it because the microphone and camera aren't so good. Uh, but I will get some help uh, with my computer eventually. I mean, I've got a guy helping me. It's taken a month to get it back to good. Uh, but it's still there's still massive problems. I do believe I might have had a virus or I might have been hacked or something like that. And, look, yes, I'm, uh, I'm doing this. Uh, I'm committing myself to do it every, uh, every Tuesday at 3.30, and I can even do it earlier. I can go to 3 o'clock or 2.30 if it suits some of you um, in, um, you know, countries where it's late right now. So let me know. Give me some feedback. This is a good time for me, but uh, earlier is even better. Um, so I'm flexible. Um, okay, I've got some feedback that it's too early. Great. No worries. All right. Well, thank you, and um, we'll be back here uh, next week um, for some more really good stuff. And um, if anyone's uh, going to stay back, I'll, um, I'll stay back until the last one, if that's okay. I don't mind. I've got plenty of time today. All right, so just fire the questions away if you want to, if that's appropriate. Otherwise, if, if I need to close off, I'll do that. So perhaps, Ruth, if you can... Tell me um, what I need to do. Or anyone else for that. Uh, okay, um, the name of the book for the, um, the Light of Egypt is Thomas H. Burgon. Thomas... H, there it is, Thomas H. Burgoyne. Uh, Venus crosses the sun and us has an eclipse. Well, Venus is always eclipsed. Venus is never visible in her totality. She is always eclipsed. In fact, that's what the, um, the Muslims teach us on the green flag of the crescent of Venus. That is not the moon, that's the crescent of Venus. They are telling you a scientific fact. Venus is never visible, whole is visible. Um, I would go to uh, Amazon. Uh, you can purchase this book. For twenty dollars, Thomas H. Burgoyne, The Light of Egypt, twenty dollars. I'd I'd have it for your for your own library. You can you know if you're anything like me. If you're anything like me, you'll be doing stuff like this to your books. <laughs> I will endeavour to, um, you know, tabulate and catalogue as much good information, truth-wise, so that we can know the truth. Um, and so I have my books marked so that I'm being prepared to be able to source the information. 
Do I eat any meat? No, I don't eat any meat. None at all. Nothing. I, I will. I will never, never eat flesh of an animal. And that's my decision. Um, and that's personal. And I'm not, you know, I'm not suggesting that um, you must be a vegetarian or a vegan to ascend. I'm not suggesting that at all. Uh, but uh, look, the the only thing that I do, I, I think that is um, that disqualifies me from being a vegan is I have some cheeses, which uh, like ricotta, you know, that's the Italian ricotta cheese uh, and stuff like that. I don't have eggs. Eggs are indigestible anyway. You cannot di- digest them. Um, and- and if you want information about this, um, you can YouTube another uh, Dr. David Judd. Uh, I'll put that in there in the chat. He's a scientist. He's an Australian. He lives not far from me. He's been in New York for 30 years. He has a alternative health show on a TV network in New York. He's been doing that for many years. And uh, he teaches that um, so I'm not uh, for human consumption, uh, together with stuff like um, carrots, um, potatoes, and bananas. They are the four that I remember. Potatoes, carrots, eggs, and bananas. Sorry to have to tell you that if you're a fan of those foods. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, yeah, carrots, yeah, I don't know, you know, we've been taught that it's got vitamin D, it's good for your eyes and everything. Take my word for this. Please look up David Judd's work. You need to be, you need to uh, be familiar with his work to understand why it is that these are no good. They have proteins in them that we cannot digest. But you need to verify this for yourself, please, because, um, you know, I, I rely on you know, the expert in their field. And he is a wonderful man. And he is a friend of mine personally. He's interviewed me on shows, taught me so many things about diet and everything like that. One thing that he taught me, which was really good, when you drink or eat, be sure to spend time mixing your saliva. Otherwise, your... Um, your internal organs will not really recognise the food or the drink. So you need to swish the water in your mouth. Now, drink slowly, eat slowly. Get the saliva in there because it's the saliva that... Yeah, I love bananas too. Bananas are such a great fruit. Although cherries are the sexiest fruit on the planet. Wouldn't you agree? Is there a sexier fruit than cherries? (laughs) <laughs> strawberries okay well I was told that passion fruit was supposed to be the sexiest but uh, I don't know I can't topple cherry now have I missed any questions because every time I go back in the chat I get pulled back to ask another question if I haven't done it yet uh, blueberries, blueberries are supposed to be really good as antioxidants, but again, you know, I'm not a nutritionist. I, I know a stack about nutritionists. My wife's daughter is um, is um, doing her um, uh, education. She's in going through university. She's going to be a naturopath, and she's teaching us so much about nutrition. She's fantastic. Um, and I'm learning great. I learned a lot of stuff. But um, I know that blueberries um, are really great for antioxidants. Mm. Yeah, I love cherries too, Ruth. Cherries are the best. I grew up on um, cherry trees everywhere, and I used to oh, gulp them down. Oh, loved fruit. My father had a beautiful orchard. We had pears, grapes, pomegranates. We had chestnuts, walnuts, we had uh, locusts, oh, we had every kind of fruit. I grew up, you know, on 
on a beautiful farm, riding horses without saddles, uh, eating fresh fruit straight off the tree. I had a great upbringing. Yeah, bananas, eggs, potatoes and carrots, they are the four that I know for sure. that are not digestible. Check out his work on YouTube. He's got a lot of good... He's a very eccentric... He's an Aquarian, you see. He's an eccentric Aquarian. <laughs> and so he's very mental. He's a very mind guy, you see. And uh, so you're finding rather exotic and interesting. He, care, he, he wears a, a ponytail... He, he spent a lot of time with the Hopi Indians in America, I believe, and they adopted him as a son, as an indigenous son. He has been initiated in an, in, 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 in an Indian... He's a bit of a drum below Melchizedek type, you know? Dreams? Um, I'm not uh, too good with, you know, the interpreting of dreams and everything um, that... Uh, in order to um, create lucid dreaming, you need to be on the ball with it. You need to take notes about your dreams, remember your dreams. You need to build a, um, you know, a repertoire of of um, information about your dream dreaming. And yes, they do mean something. Yes, they are um, important. Yeah, that's the correct spelling, uh, Patricia. That's jump. J U double B, um, and uh, they do have they do have meaning. Oh yes, there's symbols there. There's arc- forks over knives is an excellent documentary on diet. How do you spell that? Di- David's last. Yeah, got that. Okay. Uh, Masaro Imoto is um, there again. He's showing the causal nature of creation. You see, you speak to a drop of water, you speak love to that water, you think it, you speak it, and then the the the, um, the snowflake that is produced is either um, a um, discordant snowflake or it is a perfect snowflake. So we, we understand with this how causal things, the Father and the Son, can really be um, powerful in our creating processes. Uh, symbolism. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think uh, symbolism is the only language the sun ends, but, you know, like there's, uh, there is mathematics and there is uh, music, isn't there? Uh, although they come into the conscious realms. But um, symbolism is definitely the language which imprints itself on the subconscious. And um, the Egyptians knew this. The Egyptians gave us a language of symbols called hieroglyphs and hiero meaning holy, and glyph meaning writing. So these holy writings, they were wise enough and they had foresight enough to engrave them on monuments made of marble and and alabaster and lime and granite because they knew that nothing would help man through the Iron Age. Even though the gods would provide luminaries such as Leonardo da Vinci, Boethius, Hypatia, Porphyry, and all of these luminaries in lineage in the Prisca theology uh, tradition that we have, nonetheless, the Iron Age would not tolerate.